So I wanted to group this, these two together because they both have this angle out in the middle there. And um, it's, not an it's not a central angle and it's not an inscribed angle. So right now we don't have a way to solve it. We will actually in the future learn a way to get what are called, I call them internal angles. But right now the way that you would go at this is to find out about um, an interior uh, triangle that would maybe hint to you uh, what to do. So let me um, let me just take a look at this guy here a little bit. Let's uh, bring these out nice and big now. And uh, let's just get a few numbers working here for me. So um, this 20 would mean that this is a 40 here because it's double the inscribed angle that's here. That 40 would make this a 20. Now how does this help us? Well, you can actually now solve for all the missing angle. Uh, let me highlight the missing angle here. You can solve for this angle because you're in a triangle and that will help you get angle 3, a linear pair right beside it. So ultimately what actually happens is by solving a triangle and its angles 20, 50, uh, 70, this is 110, that lets you get this angle just by using the linear pair there. So I guess I would say the same thing to you about this guy here. If you were able to solve uh, for angle 1 and 2, then you can find out this angle here. And this angle happens to be exactly vertically opposite to this one. And so that's how you could get angle 3, is it's the vertical angle to the one in the triangle. So if you work uh, within this triangle right here and find its angles, which I think is doable, this, this 60 here uh, leads us to know this angle, this 100 leads us to know that, and those two can help me get the angle down in this corner and then I can get angle 3. So my clue to you is basically uh, solve the angles in a triangle and then you can go after the internal angles, usually that way.